medicine has been evolving for the last, believe it or not, thousands of years. It has been quite a complicated journey for all sorts of scientists and physicians. In today's day and age, modern medicine is quite advanced, with so many different practices, tools, and new discoveries that have been made over the years. Modern medicine, or medicine as we presume today, began to emerge after the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution occurred during the 18th century, around the year 1790, all the way to the year 1870. So what exactly was the Industrial Revolution? The Industrial Revolution was the transition from hands-on production processes all the way to machinery that would do the work for us humans. It occurred heavily throughout Europe and the United States of America. So what was included? The transition involved moving away from most hand production methods. The new change was the implementation of machines, new chemical manufacturing processes, new iron manufacturing processes, the increasing use of steam power, water power, the development of machine tools, and of course, the upbringing of the mechanized factory system. What the Industrial Revolution also led to was an unexpected rise in the rate of population growth. Later on, during the 19th century, as further manufacturing processes involved using heavier machinery, various work-related diseases sadly became more and more common. Some examples of these work-related diseases consisted of lung disease, dermatitis, and something called fossy jaw. Fossy jaw was a kind of jaw necrosis that affected employees working with phosphorus. It meant the degeneration of jaw bones which had been attributed to the accumulation of phosphorus in the jaw, all because of frequent inhalation. A painful and chronic condition, the victim's gum would become red, swollen, and inflamed, and the jawbone would begin to decay and infect the surrounding areas further. Because there were no medications to treat fossy jaw, it took years for the condition to make it to the final stage, where surgical treatment was required. This condition usually occurred in the matchstick industry, where phosphorus levels were high. During the 19th century, there were many new diseases and breakthroughs. However, there were communications and political changes where knowledge about medicine was spread and health was made a human right. Speaking of surgery, what exactly is it? Surgery is a medical or dental specialty and it uses instrumental techniques and operative manual on a person to investigate and treat a pathological condition. This can include a disease or injury and treating it can help improve bodily function, appearance, and also repair unwanted severed areas. Here are three common examples of surgeries that take place. Number one is the appendectomy. In this surgery, the appendix, which is a small tube leading to the large intestine, is removed to treat appendicitis, which is the acute inflammation of this tube caused by infection. Number two is the cataract surgery. You know how some people have cloudy vision? To solve that problem, the cataract surgery consists of the removal of the cloudy lens. It is then replaced with a clear artificial lens implant. And number three is the tonsillectomy. This involves the removal of either one or both of the tonsils, which are located at the back of the mouth. Your tonsils help fight infections. Surgeries have been in progress for many years, and so you might wonder, who was the first person to initiate surgery? You might have heard of the father of surgery, or Sushrut. He was a physician, surgeon, and teacher of Ayurveda in the ancient city of Kashi, India, now known as Varansi. Sushrut wrote one of the world's earliest scriptures on medicine and surgery during the 6th century BCE. His scripture, the Sushrut Samhita, or the Compendium of Sushrut, encompasses the eight branches of Ayurvedic medicine. There are six sections and 184 chapters. Inside are details about 650 drugs of animal, plant, and mineral origin. Described are 300 kinds of operations that require 42 different surgical treatments and 121 different types of surgical instruments. Sushrut's treatise provides the world's first written record of a forehead flap rhinoplasty, which is a technique still in use today by our surgeons. When translated, his procedure for a forehead flap rhinoplasty states, first the patient is given the required quantity of wine until he feels unconscious. Then the length of his empty portion of the nose is measured with a leaf. A flap of skin from the forehead, the same as the size of the nose, is dissected. The nostrils holes are closed but still allowed to breathe. Then the dissected flap is now placed in the position of the nose. The flap of skin is now molded into the exact shape and then stitched with the support of the cheeks. The skin thus properly adjusted should then be sprinkled with a powder of licorice, red sandalwood, and barberry. Finally, it should be covered with cotton and clean sesame oil should be constantly applied. 
For five to six days after the operation, the patient is made to lie on his back, and on the tenth day, bits of soft cloth are put into the nostrils to keep them sufficiently open. Further procedures can be followed if the nose is not in the required shape. This was Sushrut's procedure for performing a forehead flap rhinoplasty, and the same process is conducted today in modern medicine. As you can see, surgery has come a long way. The father of surgery, Sushrut, has been a crucial pioneer in the field of medicine. Well, that's the end of our video today. We hope you enjoyed and make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and share the real story with others. See you in the next one.